Have I got an absolute banger of a tutorial for you today? I'm going to show you how to do the zoom reveal effect. Basically, you get closer to an object and on the object it reveals another video inside it and it gets close to the screen and then you carry on with that video. So you, you transition from one video to another using this close-up effect. Wow. Wow. Very cool stuff. Now it's always good to learn the basics, of course, which would be you just put on a mask somewhere and then you just keyframe it and make it and, and resize your keyframe bigger and bigger and bigger as it gets closer to the screen, right? It's a simple procedure, it's a little bit time consuming, but it, it's very it's very good to learn. It's a really good effect. However, I am going to show you my all time trick that you can use that's probably not been shown on YouTube or anywhere else. I'm going to reveal it right here in this video for you. What? Now, as usual, I always say watch out for tips and tricks throughout the video tutorial, but today we're just going to show you this one. So watch out for the tip trick inside this video because it is an absolute time saver. And if you didn't know how you could do it like this, drop me a comment down below in the comments. I didn't know you could do that. Let's open up Power Director. Let's get into it. <laughs> so I've opened a new project, I've brought in my video clip here and I've dropped it down onto track 2 and the reason is because we're going to be doing some masking and all it is is basically I just set up my camera here just for this tutorial and I used my mobile phone and I walked up to the lens. It's a simple effect like this and what we're going to do is we're going to mask out the lens area so we can see the other video inside. It's a very cool effect, right? Cool. So make sure I'm Track 2 is selected. Now, if you've been following along with my tutorials, you know that I add a color board always onto track 1, something in white or a blue or green or whatever it is you like. Just, <laughs> just don't choose black because so the mask is already black itself. So I'm going to bring white color board down here onto track 1. Make sure track 2 is selected. Double click it open and go to mask designer. So if you're on the list here, you'll have mask designer. I'm using a new version of mine up here at the top. So I'm going to use a preset, this circle here, and I'm going to go into advanced so that we can see our keyframes. Now you can see why I used a, key, a color board on, on track one so I can see this masking here much nicer. So I will just resize the mask so it fits over the lens like this. Now I've got snap, grid snapping set on. So right on the bottom right hand side here, you see this grid here, it says enable, disable snapping, snap to reference lines. Just turn that off for the moment like this. Resize that and get it somewhere over the lens. Now it's easy to go over to the left hand side here now and click on invert mask so you can see it a little bit better. So there we go. That is looking very nice. Now if you want to get it really perfect, click on fit and zoom in. And then you can get it really nice and set up like this. That is, click back out again. And there we go. So now we've got our mask set up. We need to keyframe this. So make sure you press home key on your keyboard. So you're right at the beginning. And here on the position and scale, add a keyframe like so. So this now we've got our starter. Now we can, we can make this a little bit faster. Instead of going through one keyframe every time, we can actually press the end key on our keyboard and then add another keyframe, position and scale like so, and then resize this to where we want it. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to bring it right up to about there, something like that. We can go a little bit bigger, it doesn't really matter because the other video is going to show through and people are not going to be bothered so much about this because we're going to fade that out and, and, and watch the other video. So now you've got this selected, press home on your keyboard. See, there's the Home and end will take you to the beginning and end. And then you can see how it works. Now what we can do is just jump two keyframes forward and just keep moving this and resizing it. So press the period key or the full stop key on your keyboard twice. One, two, and it moves it. See, and now you do then is just keep resizing it a little bit and moving it around. One, two, move it and resize it. So it stays in here to because it's automatically resizing it for us so you don't have to keep doing it because we did the ending one, see? One, two. Now I'm going to speed this up because you don't want to see me doing this like so and we'll come back to it when I've finished this off. Oh, 
Okay, so there we go. Uh, if you notice down on the keyframes area, you'll see the last area. We didn't actually resize it anymore because it was pretty much good to go. And that was a good reason we did the ending and the beginning keyframes and resized it automatically. So that saved a little bit of time. But other than that, it's quite laborious. Um, it's time consuming, yes. Um, and you can go to each keyframe, of course, and resize it and get it absolutely perfect. And if you wanted to be absolutely perfect, you could, of course, zoom in and then make it absolutely 100 percent i'm going to do it like this so you can see how to work this and then you can i'll leave that for you to try out so i'm going to click on okay and there you go we've got our little mask set up now we don't need uh in the timeline anymore this color board so we can just delete that out i'm going to go to stock media because i put in this stock media file i've got from some some fireworks get rid of the sound we don't need that and we just Drag it along a little bit so we can start seeing some effects. I'm going to clip that out. I don't want that. Delete on the keyboard, remove and fill the gap, and then just drop that in like so. Make sure it's selected. Go back to the beginning. And there you go. And all you do is click play, and your video will play through with that little mask there on the camera. See that? Very, very nice. And then you can zoom out and do other effects. Brilliant. Now, the top secret way of doing this, of course, is that because that's quite laborious and time consuming. Now, I'm going to leave everything here. No color boards, no nothing else like that. I'm going to make sure my track two is selected. Go to masking and I'm going to turn off the mask. So there's no mask on this and click yes. So I've got rid of the mask that we've just done. All that, all that work for nothing. So while this is still selected, double click it or go to edit and click go to video that's where we need to be so and then we're going to go to motion tracker like this and motion tracker opens up now there's no keyframing no nothing like that now i'm going to just delete this track out because this is the one i've been messing around with and add a new track in so when you open motion tracker this is usually a default of what you'll see you'll see this bounding box in the center of your screen You'll have track one down here on, on this timeline. And then it'll tell you on the left hand side all the steps you'll need to do motion tracking, right? Now, the thing is, if you leave this box big, what, when it's, its selection bounces terribly. So I'll leave it big for now just to show you how, the, how to make this work a little bit better. And all you do is you make your selection and then click on track. So I'm going to leave it there and track that. And you get this yellow circle and you can see, look at it bouncing up and down, right? I mean, that's not particularly what we want. I don't know why it's doing that, to be honest. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to right click and remove this track and we'll start again. So add a track and there we go. I'm going to resize this bounding box now so I'm nice and small, about somewhere about there. And I'm going to put it right over the lens so it's looking like that. Now, there's no zoom in, so you're basically kind of eyeballing this. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to track this again. But you'll notice now that the little yellow ball thing is not bouncing so much. And it's pretty much stuck on the, on the lens. Very neat, right? That is just what actually what we're after. Very cool. So how do we turn this now into so we don't have to do any masking? So the third object that we need to do, the third step here, if, of course, we go to the FX. Because the others, we don't need to add a title or media clips. We just do the FX. So click on FX, open, and it'll say the first line, mosaic. Change this. Spotlight. And look, it's got right on the center <laughs> on the lens. Now all we need to do is just change its color. So change the light color, but of course, be aware of the surroundings. We've got green, we've got red, we've got bluish tint on the windows. So choose a color that is absolutely not going to be found anywhere on there. So I'm going to choose a shocking pink like this. Okay. I'm going to increase the brightness fully. I'm going to leave the gradient. Don't really mind about that. It says smooth here. I'm not quite sure what this does, normal or smoother. I'm going to put it on smoother anyway, just for now. And then right at the bottom, the last one, it says adjust effect size with tracked object. Well, of course, it gets bigger and closer. So, of course, we want to make sure this is selected. Now, you don't need to track it anymore. So don't click on track. All you need to do is just play it. And there you go. Look at that. Now, you can pause it right there and, and look at it and think, yeah, don't change it here. 
just play it to the end and just make sure if it's what you want. Now, if it's not quite what you want, grab the little blue markers inside, the blue ones you need, and just increase the size a little bit like so and pull it out. And that kind of just snaps around a little bit inside. So that's gone a little bit bigger, I think. Let's try that. So let's try that. Just keep clicking play after you've made your selection. Now that's a little bit better. It's, it's a bit oblongish for my liking. So I'm going to drag this bottom corner out a little bit more. Move it just a touch. Let's try that. We're close. We're really close. So let's just expand it. Now it keeps snapping back into itself. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger this time. Let's see if we can make it. There we go. Now it's gone a little bit better. There. Click play. Let's see. Look at that. Right on there. That is right on the nose. And we're done. We just click OK. And all we need to do now is, of course, chroma key that, that color. So just go to chroma key. Choose a color picker and choose your purple that you've got and click OK. Play your video and your video will play right through. No keyframing. <laughs> no keyframing. No masking. Brilliant. So did you know you could do it like that? Give it a try yourself, see what you can come up with. If you found this video tutorial informative, don't forget to hit subscribe, give us a like, ring that bell of course to be notified every time I upload new content. Mm, go check out my channel for all things Cyberlink and more. That's my rant for today. Have a great day. Stay safe, people.